I sweat. Hi, Harold. Phones are out. Hey, Harold. Nineteen percent of four thousand six hundred. Hey, Harold. Back to your big day. Hey, looking good. Dude, the phones are off. Can I borrow your cell phone? Oh, the signal's down. Damn it. You all right? Dave, I need a favor. Sure, what is it? Can I have some change? Within moments, Harold found himself running across the plaza, heading for the nearest payphone. At last, he spotted it. But as Harold neared the phone, he saw it was occupied by a nearsighted octogenarian determined to reach his daughter in Denver no matter how many quarters it took. Fortunately, Harold remembered a bank of phones in the 6th Street subway tunnel. The baby girl's name isn't Mrs. Epson. My daughter's name is Mrs. Epson. failed to give a dial tone and the second seemed to be splattered with a fresh batch of mucus Harold dialed the third phone fervently making sure to give each number key a specific forceful push My name is Harold Crick. I believe you're writing a story about me. I'm sorry? My, my name is Harold Crick. Is this a joke? No. No, I work for the IRS. My name, Miss Eiffel, is Harold Crick. And when I go through the files at work, I hear a deep and endless ocean. Oh, Miss Eiffel? Oh. Hello? Hello. Hello. I'm Penny. I'm Kay's assistant. Oh, I'm Harold, her main character. Hello. 
I'm Harold Crick. I know. How did you find me? We audited you a little more than 10 years ago, and, and your number was in the file. I'm sorry, but this, this is incredibly strange. Uh, you're telling me. Didn't you think you were crazy? Sort of. But then you were right about everything. Like, everything. And, and then you said, little did he know. Little did he know? Yeah. It's a third-person omniscient. Jesus. Which meant it was, well, you know, someone other than me. At least that's what Professor Hilbert said.